بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته جماعة المسلمين to days جمعة is somewhat special that uh, our good friend and brother Mullah Shakir of the Deen team has asked that we speak about uh, really addressing two topics that would form part of the curriculum at the school in Johannesburg that speaks of proud, being proud Muslims, number one, and number two that speaks about our heritage as Muslims in South Africa in general, but the Cape specifically, which is the founding bed of Islam in South Africa. And uh, with regards to being proud Muslims, I think one narration that captures this very beautiful and you and I should feel this within our hearts. Why should I be proud to be a Muslim? Even though there are so many beautiful reasons. But the, perhaps the, the, the one outstanding reason why you and I should be proud over the fact that we are Muslims is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found a group of his companions one day and they were discussing previous prophets. So they spoke of Nabi Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and they said that Nabi Ibrahim was Khalilullah, the close friend of Allah. And they spoke of Nabi Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and they said that he was Kalimullah, the one who spoke to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then they spoke of Nabi Isa and they said that he is Ruhullah, the one in whom Allah blew his spirit. Allah blew the spirit of Nabi Isa into his, into his body. Or that of his mother's and her birth was not a normal birth. And the Prophet overheard them, Khalilullah and Kalimullah. And then the Ruh of Allah, the spirit of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to his Sahaba and he said, I've overheard your discussion. <coughs> and what you are saying is very true <coughs> for Nabi Ibrahim is the Khalil of Allah and Nabi Musa is the Kaleem of Allah and Nabi Isa is Ruhullah but you must know that I, your Prophet I am the beloved of Allah there is no one Allah loves more than me and if Allah loves our Prophet more it means he loves us more we are the best of nations the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he told us even though we lost on the face of this earth chronologically, but on the day of judgment we will be the first Ummah to enter Jannah. Nabi Adam, Nabi Noor, Nabi Ibrahim, Nabi Musa, na them and their nations cannot enter Jannah until Muhammad and his Ummah enters Jannah. And therefore Allah said, Kuntum khayra ummatin, you are the best of nations. And Allah does not speak a lie. He said it in his Quran. So how can you and I not be proud over the fact that we are Muslim? That our Prophet is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of the best. The cream of the cream. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala selected him over billions and billions of souls. Allah selected the best of the best. The cream of the cream is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that alone should make us proud Muslims. But beyond that, the teachings of our religion, the morals, the ethics, the sharia, ah. these are all things that should drive within our hearts a deep sense of appreciation that we are upon the truth and our way is the only way that will lead to salvation. Our way is the only way in which people will live harmoniously on, this, on the lands and on the earth, live in harmony. That's the only way that will bring the balance that the world needs. It's the only way that will remove the injustices that we are witnessing the world over. It is only the way of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And therefore we should be proud. As for our heritage as Muslims within this country, there's so much to speak about. The journey of Islam in South Africa starts with the coming of Sheikh Yusuf from Makassa, who was a saint, a scholar, and one of his great teachers we know was the great Imam Abdullah bin Alawi Al-Haddad rahimahullah ta'ala. And therefore the name Imam Haddad should not be a name that is foreign to Muslims living in this country. It should be almost synonymous to Sheikh Yusuf rahimahullah ta'ala 
who is the founder of Islam in, the, in South Africa. And his legacy is one that has been well documented. His teachings are well documented. The, 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 the methodology that he brought to our community is a methodology that has led to our community, the Muslim in, in South Africa in general, and perhaps Cape Town specifically, being one of the most successful Muslim minorities that the world has seen. Mention another Muslim minority that has achieved what Muslims in South Africa has achieved. If we were just to look at halal status of foods, I've traveled a bit in Europe and North America, and we, that, there's no sophisticated system of determining what is halal and what is not halal. And therefore we still find scholars very sadly from the Middle East issuing fatawa stating that it's halal for you to eat the flesh of the meat of Jews and Christians, <laughs> right? Even though there's a debate with among Muslim scholars whether that is permissible or not and what exactly constitutes a Christian and a Jew and so forth and so on. But in our community, halal is so easily available, so widespread. I can pick up a packet of sweets in the store and it'll tell me whether the sweets is halal and haram. In most parts of Europe, the sandwich that is halal is a vegetarian sandwich. And that's the only way to determine halal. Beyond that, forget about it. Our achievements are really unbelievable. Right? And that is because of a methodology that started with Sheikh Yusuf. Beyond that, there were other very important saints within our community that came to further establish this methodology. A methodology of love, a methodology of understanding, a methodology of peace. A methodology where we integrate within society, yet we do not assimilate with the West. We don't assimilate with non-Muslims. And what assimilation means is when I give preference to their ways over the ways of my Prophet ﷺ, over the ways of, of Muslims. And therefore assimilation is bad, but integration is important. Many other Muslim minorities, they were not able to integrate. So they recreated their own Muslim areas within non-Muslim countries and they sort of stayed there. And therefore, sadly, we find in many parts of the, of the Western world that you find Indian masjids where Jumu'ahs, even though the language spoken in the country is English, they have Urdu sermons or Arabic sermons in Arabic communities. And there's no integration. And here we find a community because of the methodology that was laid down by our forefathers we find that uh, we have masajid, plenty of them, hundreds, if it hasn't yet reached a thousand, of masajid where integration is taking place that all our sermons are conducted in English, which is followed by an Arabic khutbah. And these are great achievements. The halal industry, an example that I enjoy making, establishing the achievements of this community, is when somebody wants, I, I forget whether it's probably over 15 years ago, it was either an article I read or I was listening to the radio. But the gist of the story is that a person calls in, or he writes, and he's complaining as to why he cannot find a, 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 a ham pizza. And he starts off with one restaurant, I don't know where it was, but let's call it in Vangate, and he went into Debanese, and he ordered a ham pizza, and they said, sorry, we halal. And he went to the next, branch of Debanese and they said sorry we halal and he went to the next branch of Debanese and they told him sorry we halal and he's complaining why is it that I'm living in a non-Muslim country where Muslims are barely 3% yet I'm traveling from branch to branch and I can't find a ham pizza and that's the impact of Muslims within the society through integration in all fields in the medical fraternity in business in parliament in politics you name it, we had Muslims that became leaders. And what led to the state is a, that methodology that the likes of Sheikh Yusuf rahimahullah ta'ala came with. And their methodology was a methodology of spirituality, a methodology of a masjid, a methodology of tasawwuf, a methodology of establishing strong relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the one hand, and on the other hand, being of service to humanity. And therefore our Muslims, they, the, the role that they played was unheard of, right? When the, I think it was the Dutch who were fighting the British, the Muslims, they played their role in those battles, being part of society. And therefore, uh, it's so important that we show our respects to these great Imams that laid these foundations. 
or karamat or the karamat as we as we refer to them. Tuang Sayyid Alawi, who lies buried next to Tuang Guru, the founder of the very first masjid in South Africa, Tuang Sayyid Alawi was a Sayyid from Yemen. He came from Mokka or Makha, which was a port in Yemen. And uh, we, coffee comes from, by the way. He traveled to Indonesia, he participated in, 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 in uh, he fought the Dutch East Indian Company in Indonesia, and therefore they were sent with the Sheikh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Matora, who lies buried on Robben Island. They were sent as prisoners to the Cape, but when Say, Tuang Said Alawi was released, he played a role of da'wah here in this community. And one of the, some quoted as a miracle of his, that in the evenings, the slave lodges, he would find his way into the slave lodge, even though the doors were locked. And they, they found him miraculously inside with the Quran in his head, coming to teach the slaves how to read the Quran. Others said that he was a policeman and therefore he may have had keys to enter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But they served and they taught a methodology that eventually saw Islam growing within this community. The, the, the rights that Muslims enjoy in our community is not seen elsewhere. I quoted in the past one of my teachers who are running late for Jumu'ah. And he came to the red robot and uh, he was going to jump the robot, robot until he saw through the corner of his right eye that there was a traffic officer on his side. So he decided to, you know, his instinct that his, his foot immediately went to break. And the car skid over the robot until he was fi- found himself in the middle of an intersection. And he told us that, wat om te maken? Must I reverse or must I just drive on the traffic officers just behind me? And the traffic officer pulled out his radio and shouted over the radio, Khatma an, Khatma an, Jaiskla la to Jumu'ah. Where do we hear of that? Jewish, Christian bosses instructing Muslims that, Mr. So, Mr. Sali, why are you not in Masjid today? Mr. Adams, why are you not going to mosque? Today's Friday. Right? Because of the efforts of these great Imams, because of our rich Islamic heritage. And that is something that we need to hold on to. Some of the the destructive ideologies like you know I, I, this wasn't my intention but in Nigeria and sadly no one speaks about it a lady who who made comments that were seen as blasphemous towards our Prophet وسلم, by a group of students on university was beaten to death pelted with rocks and her body was set alight that's not Islam and those ideologies will not see Islam growing within our community and our societies so we have this beautiful heritage, we have this beautiful legacy that we can hold on to. One of the great Imams of the past that we often don't speak of was a person by the name of Tuang Nuruman, also known as Pai Skapi. Right? And he, if you go to the Tanabaru, uh, on top of Tuang Guru's grave, you'll find that he has a maqam over there. And Pai Skapi was a, another religious person, but he was remarkable in that he was known for having lived a very bad life. And then he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance and became one of the awliya of this community. And that is so amazing. Like uh, even Qudam al-Maqdisi has a book titled Kitabu Tawwabin, the stories of saints who had bad past and became from the awliya of Allah. And Paiskapi was one of them. And then he served the community. He used to have a hut on Signal Hill where he used to spend his time in Khalwa. And many Muslims narrated that they would often see a beam of light shining from his hut to the heavens. And one of the things that he was known for was serving animals. He used to sink into wells to draw water to give to the animals that required water. And many of the awliya attained sainthood because of serving animals. We know that Bahauddin and Naqshabandi rahimahullah ta'ala reached high stations of wilaya of the his sheikh made him take care of dogs for a good number of years. And through his service of animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a high status of sainthood. So these great saints, these awliya, they established the heritage of Islam within our society. And through their efforts and their participation and their involvement within society and showing care to communities, being part of societies, with integrating without assimilating, Maintaining our identity, Islam is my religion, the masjid is my house, Allah is my Lord, Muhammad is my role model, 
embodying that integrated into society, played roles of benefit to community, starting with the serving water to, to animals, like we see in the, in the example of Paiskapi. And today we have Muslims in all fields, right? Some of the leading doctors in facing the pandemic were Muslims. Some of the leading lawyers we have within our societies are Muslims through the efforts of these great men. And this is a heritage that we need to hold on to. And this is not a heritage that we should let go of. And the secret behind it is the methodology. Read about the methodology. Read about the, 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 the uh, method in which they understood the Quran and the Book of Allah. And how they interacted with people. And what type of classes they established. They were people of dhikr. They were people of salawat. They were people that that, were, that spent their nights drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while during the day they were in the service of humanity. May Allah allow us to appreciate that heritage and then to build on that heritage. May Allah use us the way He subhanahu wa ta'ala used them. And therefore if I have time in my day I should try to visit them. One sight that will, that will never leave my mind is when I entered the maqam of Tuang Sayyid Alawi one day in the Bukap, in the Tanabaru, and there was an elderly gentleman, this was probably 10 years ago, I don't know if the uncle is alive or not, I never took his name, was standing and he was making dua and we joined him in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when he concluded he spoke to us and he was like really muwafaq, he just began crying and he said, I love visiting these people for had it not been for them, we would not have been Muslim. Had it not been for them, he said, there would be no Qur'an recited in our masjids. Had it not been for them, he said, maybe I would have been drinking alcohol today. So not only for Islam, but the methodology that they brought, saw to societies growing, saw to Muslims establishing themselves within this country. And we have stories to tell about this that you won't find in any other Muslim diaspora, in any other Muslim minority. We should be proud about our legacy proud about our imams, proud about the salihin that brought Islam to our shores, proud over the fact that we are Muslim, proud that our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the most beloved of Allah and the best of all in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us true representatives of Islam. May we not only talk the talk, but may we walk the walk. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين